Rise of Red is the fourth addition to the Descendants franchise. It's a reboot and rumored to be the start of a second trilogy called the Pocket Watch trilogy. The film came out July 12, 2024. It is the lowest rated Descendants film on Letterboxd, coming in at a 1.8 out of 5 stars. So, personally, there's no one I would recast. Now, that may be kind of controversial because some people might be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> what do you mean? Why, 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 why not? Especially this person. Because I've been seeing some, some opinions and I wouldn't recast them. You know, I don't think it's how they look, y'all. I don't really think that that's really the problem. I think it's more so the fact that they turned Prince Charming into a skater boy. Like, that should be illegal. Like, I'm just... What? Excuse me? What? Hmm? Excuse me? <laughs> what? <laughs> Why is he a skater boy? She said, see you later, boy. He wasn't good enough for her. What is going on here? This is not an Avril Lavigne music video. This is Disney. He should not be a skater boy. And that personally offended me. So I know a lot of people have a problem with the fits. They're like, uh, side-eyeing those outfits. Especially Chloe, okay? She's getting so attacked for her fits and I just have to defend her for a second because even though I'm no fashionista myself, maybe I am, maybe I'm not, I like Chloe's fit. You were being so out of you. Oh, God. Did you oh, just no. get out of here? You no. need to no, wait. Not just oh, no. That. Sorry. <laughs> I kind of think it looks good. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I personally don't have any issue with the way Chloe is looking in the movie, and this is in regards to the main cast. I think the outfits are pretty much fine for the main cast. However, oh my God, girl! I don't even. I'm not like I have an interest in fashion, but I'm not like super like into it like that. But it was even bothering me. The background characters in Rise of Red literally look like they're a part of a different movie. I'm not saying make them look as fashionable as the main cast, you know? I get why they don't have the same budget as them, right? Because they're background characters. You could at least make it look like they have that Disney pop, you know, to make it look like they're actually a part of the same universe and the same film. Because they don't look like that. They, like... They literally look like they're wearing 2016 very much mm, slime DIY yay type of style and it just doesn't click with me. I don't vibe with that. I do not appreciate that. I don't know why they made that decision. I I, I don't know why they thought in their brain, you know, this this was a good thing to do. Let's make the background characters look like they're from 2016 which is a year after the first Descendants movie came out. Let's do that. You know, that is thinking with your noggin. <laughs> that is using your cranium in the right way. There, there was something else that I was like, it doesn't feel like it's Descendants in the way that they look. I don't know, there was something about the way that they look and some people pointed it out. It's the hair. And I was like, oh my God. God, yes, it's the hair. Because the VK kids are the ones with abnormal hair colors, as you've seen throughout the entirety of Descendants, right? The AK, Oradon kids, or whatever you want to call them, they are the ones that have regular hair colors. Hair colors that you can find in like normal people. In this one, they decided to give like everyone abnormal hair colors like pretty much barely anyone especially in the main cast actually no one in the main cast has normal hair colors i if i could make one change about the main cast it would just mainly be the hair my favorite game 
Before I present my version of Rise of Red, I'm gonna have to have a conversation about my issues with the story because there's a lot to get through. <laughs> there's gonna be a lot to get through because there's just so many issues, you know? And this is speaking from someone that was excited to watch it. <laughs> Can you believe that? I was excited. <laughs> I honestly can't believe that I had any expectations, especially knowing how horrible the third Descendants film was. I shouldn't have expected anything for the fourth one, but I was like thinking that because they were gonna reboot it, which is also a dumb reason because, um, <laughs> I rarely like reboots in the first place. I almost always end up hating them and I almost always end up believing that they can't hold a candle to the original. And it's usually true, at least for like girly stuff or whatever. Everyone's problem with the film, even people that like the film, it's not necessarily the music, not exactly the casting or the outfits, it's the story. And more specifically, the ending. <laughs> That's really what people are like, oh god, oh golly gee, what is that? The story isn't bad just because of its ending. It's also bad because there's no character development for Red. You know, she doesn't change throughout the entire film. And I think that that's something that I haven't seen lots of people mention, but Red, even though she's really the main character, I know Chloe's also another main character along with her, but she is really, it's her, her her character's name is in you know the, the it's quite literally about her but she doesn't change she doesn't learn anything she doesn't have any growth none of her beliefs are truly challenged the story also seems extremely confused on what kind of story it wants to be and what kind of message it wants to send it it like hints at, like it dabbles at so many different themes, but doesn't commit to one overall theme of the whole story. And it makes the story feel very all over the place and very messy. And like, I don't know what happened in the writer's room, but is it about mommy issues, being a good person, trauma, bullying? true love or how you can't trust anyone. The film truly feels confused on what it wants to be. Like, it seems like it doesn't know what kind of film it wants to be, but it wants to send a good message, but it doesn't know what kind of message it wants to send. Like, the first Descendants film, aka <laughs> the best one, you actually see Mal, who is a very similar character to Red, by the way. They take lots of, they basically repackage a lot of things that were in other Descendants films and they put it into this one to, I guess, recreate the same success. They could have been more creative with it, but they didn't do that. Except Mal, actually, you see her change, you know? You see her go from like, being mean and all that stuff because that's all she ever knows or whatever to like slowly changing and slowly experiencing you know true love friendship all that kind of stuff and she ends up becoming a good person at the end like when mal does what she does in the first film you actually feel like <gasps> you feel like oh damn girl <laughs> like you know what i mean because because you see that she has changed and you see her go from good to bad. Red stays the same. What about her has changed? Really, name name one thing. Not about Bridget that has changed. Not about Chloe. Not about Ella. Not about any other character. Tell me something about Red, her character, the way she acts, how she has changed throughout the film because she hasn't <laughs> she has acted pretty much the same throughout the entire movie none of her beliefs are challenged nothing that she does is challenged something that this film has that the original film lacks is a plot hole 
a major plot hole. I mean, that scene where, where you know, they open up the book or whatever and they get frozen. If they were frozen, how was the prank able to be done in the first place? It doesn't make sense. And now there's some fan theories about it being Cinderella or whatever. I don't even know. But a movie, I should be able to watch a movie on its own without having to watch the sequels. If I have to watch the sequels, this might be an unpopular opinion, but I don't care. If I have to watch the sequel in order to understand the first film, it shouldn't be a movie. It should be a series, okay? Because I shouldn't watch a movie, leave the movie like being like, that, wait, what? Feeling just so confused. And to be honest, Chloe actually gets a lot more char character developments than Red, if you really think about it. Because Chloe's, Chloe's views actually change throughout the film. Like you see her, change into a different person like at first she's taught about being a good person and what it means to be a good person and then after that um you know throughout the film like she's the only person that actually makes a sacrifice sacrificing her shoes she's the only person that learns her lesson right of what it means to be a good person she's the only person that actually changes throughout the film like, she's the only one that receives character development, which is crazy. Because Chloe has so much more character development, they should have either made it about Chloe or have just developed Red's character more. But anyways, here is my version of Rise of Red. We are introduced to Red, the daughter of the Queen of Hearts. She has a bit of resentment for her mother because she wants to have her own life and her own freedom, but she is forced to live by her mother's rules. Due to her mother being the queen of hearts, Red has grown up quite selfish. She puts herself and what she wants over everyone else's. Her only friend is her tutor, Maddox, son of the Mad Hatter. Maddox does his talk about the pocket watch as we saw in the film, and he warns her about it as we also saw in the film. She tricks him like we saw in the film. Like, everything is exactly like how we saw in the film. Except for all the stuff about Chloe being a good person or whatever, because we want to take the time to develop Red. Everything plays out exactly like how we saw in the film, um, all the way up until like right after Life is Sweeter. After this, Chloe and Red and the audience can tell that Liliana is the one who caused the prank. Chloe and Red return to their dorms to discuss how they can stop her. Red expresses how she feels bad for her mom and seeing her all happy, knowing how mad and upset she would later be, makes her feel emotional. After this, they try to work together, but due to Red's selfishness, nothing works out. Red, we have to talk. Okay. About what? Do you actually care about your mom at all? Duh, of course I do. Why do you ask? You ate the cupcakes. What? Remember the cupcakes that we were supposed to give Yuliana so she could reveal the truth about her plans? Uh, huh? Red, don't act dumb. I know you ate them all. So what? I was hungry. Wow, Red. Those cupcakes could have been used to expose Yuliana and save your mom. Again, I was hungry. Well, maybe you should have held that in. Why would I do that? I have to take care of myself. You're so selfish. All you care about is yourself. And they have a huge fight and decide to go separate ways. Teacher, you're such a goody-goody. I'd rather be a goody-goody than a bad person. You sound like your mom. Thank you. And how'd that work out for her? Red then sneaks in the principal's office so that she can get the cookbook. After Red successfully gets the cookbook, Yuliana takes it from her and leaves right before the principal Merlin enters, getting Red in trouble for being inside of the office. Red is then sentenced to detention for 48 hours. You have to let me out of here. Sorry, no can do. You break the rules, you gotta pay the price. Can't I just serve my detention until after Castle coming? Young lady, if I hear your voice again, you'll be in detention for much longer than you already are. <laughs> the next day is the day of Castle coming, and in class, Chloe starts to get worried about Red. Why didn't Red come home last night? I wonder what she's up to. 
did you see the look on Red's face when she got caught? It was seriously so pathetic. I heard she's gonna be stuck in detention for 48 hours. Perfect! Oh no, I have to save Red! Fast forward to Castle Coming and Chloe saves Red from detention. And Red apologizes for what she did and Chloe forgives her. Red then puts on a dress that Chloe gives her and they both go to Castle Coming together. They notice Bridget is dancing alone because Ella couldn't come because she has been grounded. They then notice Yuli, but it's too late. Yuli then casts a spell on Bridget's shoes so that she can't move. Whoa, uh, what's going on? <laughs> Can someone help me please? I can't move. <laughs> Red starts to feel deep sympathy for her mother. I can't stand to see her be humiliated like this. She then jumps in front of Bridget right as Juliana recites her monster spell, turning Red into a monster in front of everyone. Chloe and Bridget are shocked that Red would sacrifice herself. After Red turns into a monster, she decides to chase away Yuli who ends up undoing the spell immediately. After Red turns back to normal, everyone starts looking at her and laughing, but she doesn't care and dances the night away with Bridget and Chloe. Once Ella arrives with her prince, Red and Chloe use the pocket watch and go home, and everything is all happy and good like we saw in the film. Yay! The end! Let's hope that this doesn't flop because this- oh, I tripped. This was supposed to be the rebranding, and if this flops, you know what? I'll find you. I'll find where you live, and I will attack you. Genuinely. And I'll get away with it too. Because since this is gonna flop, no one's even gonna know that I that 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 it's me. So, you know, just saying. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> wow,